Hey YouTube, I'm Sanj. Welcome to my channel, Sanj Designs, um, where I'm building a six car smart garage. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about what exactly is a smart garage and why I'm building one. So stay tuned. Okay, so first of all, what do I mean by a smart garage? Now, I've talked about this in a couple of videos I've done already. So you're probably wondering, what on earth is a smart garage? Well, I'm sure you've all heard of a smart home or home automation, where you can control certain features in the house like lighting, heating, security systems through either your phone, um, a tablet or a smart speaker such as Alexa. Well, the principles are the same. So what I'm doing is following those principles, but just on a slightly different level. So why did I decide to build a smart garage? Well, I've already got a smart home. So as I mentioned, we built this house, or we got this house in 2015, and it needed new electrics anyway, because it wasn't really for what we wanted. It was an office, as I mentioned before, so we wouldn't put new electrics in there. So it made sense to go down that route of actually looking at a smart home. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you basically what our smart home functions are, and obviously the smart home systems, but putting that all into one ecosystem. So if I want to control the lighting, the security, the doors, it all fits into one system. So I'm not having to get an app, open up an app for one element, a different app for another element. Everything sits under this sort of smart home automation. Now there's many types of smart homes that you can have. You've got your Lutron, Control 4, Nest, Hive, etc. And they all work in the same sort of way. But mine works on the system called Luxone. Uh, and you can probably find lots of videos on YouTube around Luxone. So we had it installed about five years ago and I've been living with it and loving it since then. It works really well, it does what we want to do. And it made sense to build that into the garage system and integrate the whole lot into the garage system. So let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is our smart panel. And what you can see is everything's controlled by this mini server. And that's basically the brains of the system. So it controls all these sort of extensions. So these do all the dimming of the lights. You've also got relay extensions, which can control things like heating, that can control lights, that can control actuators, that can control doors, that can control curtains as well. Here we have a load of RGB dimmers. So if you've got things like smart lighting, and you want to control things like mood lighting, like RGB type strips. You've got all of those sort of systems there. And you can see we've got quite a few in the house. Here you've got all the power supplies so that converts 240 volts into 24 volts and also 12 volts. And here you have a series of relays for high sort of load systems like underfloor heating. So this is basically the brains of the smart home. And we've actually got another one downstairs um, and here's the video. So this is what we will have in the garage going forward, but obviously slightly less because we won't have as many extensions coming off it. So what this smart system and most high-end smart systems do is you've got a series of inputs. So you, that will be things like a PIR sensor, a switch, a temperature sensor, um, a door contact. And then that then feeds into an output. And an output can be a light, it can be an alarm, it can be a heating valve. It can be underfloor heating system. It can be a pump. So what that does is it convert and controls your inputs and your outputs. And whilst you can control most things through an app, you can switch things on, switch things on. The thing about a smart home is it takes that away from you. So you don't have to keep opening up an app. So what a smart home does is, you know, it's got sensors. So if somebody walks into a room, the lights will switch on, the music can switch on, the, the curtains can open. If the alarm goes off, all the lights in the house can flash, the, the blinds will open, and that alerts everybody as well as getting a text message. So it's got some really cool functions and functionality. So it can also monitor things like heating. So it makes it actually more efficient. So you're not heating up every room in the house. So for example, if you've got spare bedrooms, you don't need those at 20 degrees. They can be at sort of 10 degrees, just from a basic comfort or frost protection. So you can control only the rooms that actually you occupy. 
Um, also, say in the middle of the night, you get up to go to the toilet and you don't want the lights coming on at full brightness. So you can adjust at certain times of the day the different brightness, the different intensity. Um, so it gives it that real smart function and you don't have to do anything as long as it's done for you. Um, so that's the whole point of doing actually a smart function. So it also learns as well. So if you want, say, get up at seven o'clock in the morning, you want the bedroom, you want the ensuite or the bathroom at 20 degrees when you go for a shower or have a bath in the morning. And it actually learns. So it will actually learn to make sure it gets to that temperature when you want it. So if it comes in too late one day, it will come on a bit earlier and therefore it will get to that comfortable temperature that you want. So it has all that smart function capability. And that's the reason why we had it. It makes the house safe. It makes the house secure. It makes it efficient. And it gives a little bit of a cool factor as well. And I love it. And I've not regretted it. Um, and it's been a really good um, a really good sort of um, piece of kit that we've got and it's not been cheap it's not been easy but it was certainly worth the investment the other advantage is you're not just limited to a new build there are plenty of retrofit systems I mean Luxone do a retrofit system as well where you can actually install some of these type systems wirelessly rather than actually having to rip out or install new cables and wires so you have that functionality and it actually can work really well um, provided again you have the right people on board but here's the most important piece of advice you'll never have a smart home if you've had a dumb install okay so it's not just about a fancy panel it's about making sure the design is correct for what you need the flexibility because things will change yeah your, your lifestyle will change, your family life will change. So the system has to be flexible enough to actually be able to adapt to that. And also, more importantly, it's how the system's configured. Because it's not just a case of putting a fancy panel, there's a bit of configuration that you need. And it's not that complicated. So you have a series of inputs, like a switch, like a sensor, and you have a series of outputs, which could be a light, which could be a heating valve. And in the middle, you have a logic block. And it's controlling that logic block to make sure you do what you want it to do when you want it to do it. I sat down with the actual company, with my electrician, I configured it and now it works brilliantly and I can do another one and I'll be able to do the garage no problem. So don't be afraid, don't be scared. You can do these things yourself if you've got the right people on board, but if you're not confident, get somebody who knows what they're doing. Do your research, okay? Find out what they've done before and make sure it does those things around flexibility, functionality, future proofing, and also it does exactly what you want it to do. So understand its limitations, but also understand your expectations as well. And trust me, if you have a dumb install as I had, all you'll end up with is an expensive ornament with some nice wires and some flashing lights. And that's not what you're paying for, okay? A smart home should be a smart home and it should actually work for you and you shouldn't be a slave to the system. So that's really important, as I said before, that you do do your homework. Um, but again, if you want to ask any questions, please feel free to comment and I'll do my best to answer those. So in terms of the garage, what I'm going to be actually doing to control is we're going to be actually having sensors, switches, um, we're going to have things like uh, smart chargers and things like that in there, but we're going to control the internal lights, external lights, garage doors. The garage is going to be armed, so there's going to be sensors in there um, basically monitoring, CCTV monitoring. Now, if somebody tries to break in, the alarm will go off, the lights will flash, and I'll get an alert on via text message or via the app. So that's really cool, especially at night time if somebody tries to break in or if we're not here. And like I said, I don't have a lot of cars at the moment, but at some point, if I do have some nice cars, I want to make sure the garage is secure, because it's really important. Um, also, I mentioned car chargers. You can set the system up so it actually charges when you want it to charge. So if you've got an economy seven rate or it's cheaper to charge in the middle of the night, you can actually switch the system on to say only charge between say 12 and four in the morning. So that saves you money, that makes it more efficient and also doesn't increase the load on the car. That's a really cool thing to do. And you can also monitor that through the app when the charge is coming on, also how many electric how much electricity you've used. So the smart functionality works if you actually make it work properly. But a key feature is it should work by itself. You shouldn't have to take your phone out to open the door, a different app to you know, disengage the alarm, a different app to switch the lights on. That's not a smart home, that's a bit of a pain. 
okay so what you want is everything to work so let's say that you know i park the car uh, at night time i press the button the doors close the lights will switch off and the house and the garage will automatically alarm that's smart so when i also come in the morning i press the button the door opens the lights come on and the garage disarms so it does that functionality for you you don't have to keep faffing around with an, an app or a switch or a socket or anything along those lines. Also, if you think about if we can have gates at the front, if somebody presses the button and the gates open, then the external lights will come on. So that will greet people as they come to the house and it would do it automatically. So that functionality, that smart functionality is what we wanted in a smart garage. Um, but it keeps it safe. It keeps it secure. It keeps it efficient. You can monitor and you can also make sure that it basically works for you rather than you working for the system. So that just gives you an example of what a smart garage is about, why I'm doing it, how I'm gonna be doing it, hopefully. Um, so, and hopefully you can understand why I'm going down the smart garage route, not just a bog standard install electrics garage route as well. So, if there's something that you're interested in, if there's something that you'd like to do, why not like, why not share, why not subscribe? Why not leave a comment and tell us what would be your ultimate six car garage? What cars would you put in there? And they don't have to be hyper cars, they don't have to be supercars, sports cars. They can be modern day classics, new cars, anything that you would want to put in your ultimate six car garage. And we'll do a piece sometime in the future and I look forward to that. That boy is good. Mm-hmm, good and terrible. He good. You must be crazy.